Divided We Stand, A Street in Our School, is our ongoing series about the Herrera School in Springfield's North End. Here is Zayda Lee Zayas to introduce tonight's story for our Spanish-speaking audience. En el otoño de 2012, estudiantes del Colegio Mount Holyoke con la asistencia de su profesor Rogelio Miñana y WGBY's Latino Youth Media Institute visitaron la Escuela Gerena con el propósito para crear historias digitales. Recientemente, tres de las estudiantes hablaron sobre sus experiencias con Connecting Points Carolee McGrath. Well, I'm a Latin American Studies major at Mount Holyoke College. So this was a course offered through the Spanish department in our school. And the course title was called Community Narratives. And something about it really caught my eye because in high school, I had had some previous experience with broadcast journalism. And I was really excited to be in a Spanish class where we wouldn't just sit and conjugate verbs all day, you know. We actually Although got that to is <laughs> interesting. <Yeah. laughs> uh, we I love actually, conjugating. <laughs> <laughs> we actually got to go out into the community and we partnered with the Latino Youth Media Institute and WGBY. And we were just able to really engage in a conversation between ourselves, our professor, the interns at the studio, and it felt like so much more than your average Spanish class because the videos that we created were about the Springfield area, which we had to dive into all this research to learn more about. And it also used our Spanish skills. We learned about Latinos in the U.S. and what their role really was here in Springfield. Okay, and so Gwen, you focused on the Herrera School. Um, you're from Washington State, so you really have an outside perspective. You know, there might be people who are watching who are not from the Springfield area, but are from Western Mass, and certainly would drive over the highway there, um, which yeah. seems to be a big issue. But you're completely from out of the area. What did you learn about this? Um, it was definitely really interesting coming into um, this project and this community that we really knew nothing about. Um, and learn about this school that is essentially built under a highway. And it was like, wow, like, how did this come to be? And what's the history um, of this? And how can we really document the story of this community? And so I thought it was, it was really a great experience to get to have that perspective of working with the community members themselves and doing a project that would hopefully benefit them and really be told from there. Um, their voices. And Sue, what do you think is the biggest concern of the community members? I know that you uh, broke down the project into the history, into the tunnel, and into um, the future, but w what's the biggest concern that seems to be um, coming out of the, uh, the project that you see? Well, <clears throat> in our class we divided the project because it's, it's such a big issue, uh, so we divided it into three. Um, Leah and I, my partner, she's not here now, but uh, we tried to focus more on the history of how Jerena was built and the issues surrounding that because it's not just building a school, like I'm just going to put bricks together, but there's also the politics uh, that involves building a school and, and f getting the funding and stuff. So um, most interesting was the research process because uh, since it was such a long time ago, we couldn't find anything on the internet about the history of Jerena. We couldn't find anything in the library, so we had to go to the Museum of Springfield to find out how, how the building of the school was, in, was uh, planned and, and, and constructed. So we had a lot of trouble finding people that actually were involved in the project and the building of the school. So we had to go through a lot of archives and it was just a lot of frustrations because we couldn't find anybody. And, but in the end, it worked out. It seems like uh, from the beginning there was controversy surrounding the, the construction of the school, um, the highway splitting, the neighborhood. Uh, from people that you spoke with, what do they want to see? What, how, how do you fix the concerns um, that the community might have? Um, well, it seems like the community really wants to see the school succeed um, as an educational institution, which was what our project was about, was about um, student achievement at Herena, which has been really growing. Um, but it's hard because of the structural, the structural 
situation of the school itself. Um, so obviously the community wants to see their students um, and young people in a school that's going to be like a healthy environment for them um, physically and mentally. And so it's um, it's definitely a tricky issue and the community definitely, definitely wants to um, make sure that Hedena is a safe place um, and that the students are learning and it really, from what we, from the project that we did, we really um, thought that the school is doing a great job of helping students succeed. But you did talk a little bit about the environment. So Greather, what, what kinds of things are these kids up against? Clearly, uh, you know, the school needs repairs and the city has talked about, um, you know, putting money towards um, repairing the school, but the kids really don't have uh, all the things they need there. Is that correct? Well, what we saw when we were interviewing students and teachers and when we were just walking through the halls of Hedena ourselves was just the unique way that the school was built. A lot of a portion of the school is underground and there's like a tunnel system connecting it. So there's always going to be issues with humidity, with students that are having asthma troubles and breathing troubles, and that's severely affecting the student attendance rate, which in turn is going to affect, you know, what they're learning in the classroom. So we found that that was a big issue that has to be tackled in Herena. And one of the things that we found out in the past through Sue and Leah's video was about the past floods that there had been in Herena where water just rushed in through the school and it destroyed a lot of the resources in the library and that's essentially why the library is now on another level. And these students, they lost all of their books, all of their computers, and it's really hard to put money back into that when you're losing so many of your resources in a school. Now you guys are nice and young, so you could certainly answer this. You talked about it being a difficult learning environment for kids and perhaps not inspiring uh, students uh, to be there or to do, to do their best. Is that something that perhaps people might underestimate how important the environment is where you're at in a school? I mean, you're in a great college right now, but you know, if you were rewind a few years, would that affect you as far as um, try to concentrate on your studies? I mean, definitely. I think that one of the greatest tools that's helping Helena to succeed in the future is the, the connections that the students are forming with their teachers. They have a really innovative education model. So this is a school that's been handed a certain deck of cards and they're playing it very strategically. So they have like a Montessori component to their education where students are not sitting in a desk, they're engaging with technology, they're engaging with their peers, they have students of different ages in their classrooms. So I think that it's, I mean, any educational setting is different and it's a little difficult because students learn at different rates and I think that Helena is doing a great job of using this new technology and kind of being like at the forefront of a new educational model for elementary schools. Now, we're talking about a school and somebody from the outside might say, hey, look, it's a school, fix it and let's move on. But people are very passionate about what happens to Helena. Did you find that and, and why? Why are they so passionate? Um, we found that there were definitely a lot of people that had strong opinions about Herena and really wanted to see the school um, succeed. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it really is a center for the community. Not only just, it's not just a school, but they, you know, in the past have also had after school programs and community events that have happened in um, the tunnel area. And it's also the crossing from one side of the North End to the other. And I mean, many people grew up going to the school and now their children go to the school. So, you know, it's a generational um, place and holds a lot of history and a lot of potential. Thank you, Grether and Gwen and Sue for joining us and, um, and sharing your perspective on a very interesting project. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so for, much having, for us. having us. To see all the Mount Holyoke College student videos about the Herena School, as well as other information related to this series, you can log on to our website at wgby.org connectingpoint and click on the Divided We Stand icon.